Welcome back to another Tactical Fly Fisher video. We're here on a very pretty piece of pocket water today, but we're gonna do a little bit of fishing on both the pockets and some flat water from downstream. Our main goal for today is talking about fishing a dry dropper on a Euro leader. So take that Euro nymphing leader that you've been fishing in you know, all sorts of broken water like this, and now let's think about applying it in some other water types that it might not be perfect for. Let's talk about dry dropper. When would you want to maybe switch from that straight Euro nymphing rig to a dry dropper on your Euro nymphing leader? There are four times when I tend to do that. Uh, let's take you through that list. Number one, fishing the dry dropper is a great way to work shallow to deep. So there was a pool section that we did this in our video, Adaptive Fly Fishing. I started with the dry dropper on the Euro leader and then caught those fish that were aggressive and willing to come up through the column and then went to a straight Euro nymphing rig after that to get the fish that are deeper down. That's a really common way that I like to work shallow to deep and helps you cover all parts of the column and get those fish that are either aggressive and or locked hard on the bottom when you go to that straight nymph rig. Um, and just helps you cover more of the fish more of the time in the limited water that you might have. Number two, dry dropper rigs are really successful in flat water. Now this isn't very flat water, but we're gonna show you some flat water in this video, water that has a really smooth surface that makes it hard to approach fish without spooking them. And in that flat water, you just often can't get close enough to Euro nymph to them uh, without spooking those fish. So fishing that dry dropper lets you fish just a little further away. And when you're fishing that, that you know, greater distance, you're, because the dry is sticking in the surface, your leader doesn't sag back towards you as much and pull the rig toward the rod like it would with the straight Euro nymphing rig. So you can fish a little bit further away and stay there with the dry dropper rig and get a better drift in that type of flat water. Also, when you're making drifts in really slow, smooth water with a straight Euro nymphing rig, you might just have a little bit of a, just enough of a tremor in your shoulder or your forearm or your wrist, you know, whatever is controlling your rod movement through the drift. If you get a little bit of a tremor or you pull your flies through the drift a little too fast, then you're making them look unnatural in that slow, smooth water. And having that suspending device of the dry fly or an indicators we're gonna talk about will let your drift uh, be better in that slower, smoother water that some, sometimes your presentation just isn't very good with the straight Euro nymphing rig. Another situation where I like to fish a dry dropper is in situations where I'm fishing directly upstream of me. Uh, that is the hardest angle for a good Euro nymphing drift and I've worked a lot over the years on my direct upstream presentation. So most of the time, especially in broken water, I can still just use a straight Euro nymphing rig and get good drifts upstream. But when I've taught it to people, that's the hardest thing to do. Getting a good drift directly upstream where you have to cast further away, manage more slack, uh, all those things that are required when you're fishing directly upstream, you can take some of those out when you're fishing the dry dropper and just stick it in the surface so your slack management doesn't have to be as perfect. You also get easier strike detection. Your cider, if you're looking directly upstream at it, it just kind of goes away or changes angles, gets a little tension. Many people miss those subtle takes that you'll see when you're directly upstream. Uh, so by having that dry fly on your leader, it's easy to see when that dry fly goes underwater and you know when you've got a take. Another situation where I like the dry dropper on the Euro rig is when it's a windy day. We got a nice calm morning, so we don't really have to worry about that today. Uh, but we might have some canyon winds this afternoon. That dry sticking in the surface helps you manage your drifts in those windy conditions when your cider might be blown all around on a typical Euro nymphing rig. So if you get that windy day, go ahead, put that dry dropper on, and hopefully it'll help you uh, control your drifts better and get uh, more takes. The last situation, number five, so this is a bonus since I think I said four before. The last situation when I like to fish that, that dry dropper is to fish a bouncing caddis. Uh, and you may have seen Gilbert Rowley's video in IF4 last year where they talked about this, or you may have seen it in our modern nymphing elevated film, but egg laying caddis often tend to dance up and down on the water as they're dropping those eggs in. And that is a really triggering movement for trout. You'll see them leap out of the water after nat naturals doing that. You can imitate those egg laying caddis really well with your Euro nymphing rig by having a heavy nymph below that anchors the, the presentation 
and then jigging that dry fly up and down off the water. So now that you know some situations where you might want to fish that dry dropper rig, let's talk a little bit about rigging it. When it comes to your Euro leader, you can fish dry dropper on any Euro nymphing leader. I do it a lot on a micro leader uh, and with some practice, you can definitely cast it on that micro leader and have very, very little sag to that dry fly. All you gotta do is just take the, your nymph that's on your dropper tag and replace it with that, that dry fly. And voila, you've got a dry dropper rig on your Euro rig. If you've got multiple rods that they're ready or you're not fishing that micro leader, uh, you might dedicate a slightly thicker leader uh, to your dry dropper rig. So if I'm running two rods a lot, I will have a, a dedicated micro leader for straight nymphing and then I'll have a dedicated rod for the dry dropper rig or floating the cider with just a little thicker uh, leader formula, a leader that's made of pretty much all 12 thousandths of an inch thick cider. And I talk about that formula in the uh, floating the cider video, which you can see up here. Uh, and floating the cider and dry dropper, there's some crossover on the presentation there. But the nice thing about a dry dropper rig is that it'll let you fish across the river, whereas with the floating cider rig, you really can only fish it directly upstream. The slightly thicker leader that I fish for both those methods, it gives you just a little bit easier turnover with that wind resistant dry fly because you can transfer a little more energy through the leader itself. In addition, you can grease that thicker leader material so that you can float it on the water a little bit further away from you and mend it. If you just have a micro leader, there's really no mass in the leader. You can grease it all you want, but you can't mend it because there's nothing to help roll a mend on the water. With a slightly thicker uh, Euro leader, you can still mend it and uh, achieve those drifts, long drifts, a little further away from you. If you're fishing a dry fly and you want to replace it with an indicator, you certainly can do that. Uh, most of the time I keep to the dry fly myself. Uh, the first reason is that I can't fish indicators in competition, so I like to practice what I can fish. But also there's a couple of benefits to the dry fly over the indicator in a lot of situations. The dry fly tends to be more delicate when it lands on the water. There are certain types of indicators like micro yarn indicators and things like that that do land softly on the water, but you most of the time have to make your own to get an indicator that lands like that. Other indicators are gonna land a lot of times with a splat, that especially in flat smooth water, which is the, the water type where I tend to fish it most often, that splat is gonna lead to a lot more spooked fish than your dry fly will. Also, many indicators tend to damage tippet uh, at, the plate, at the place where you put them on, especially if you're sliding them around a lot. And if you're damaging the tippet and weakening it, you can't put that indicator on the tippet. You end up having to put it somewhere up on the thicker portion of your Euroliter but to get the best drift possible when you're mending, you've got to be able to distance your dry fly or your indicator from that thicker part of the leader. Otherwise, you can make the mend, but it, number one, moves that dry fly or that indicator when you make that mend, but also it doesn't allow you to move that thicker part that's causing the drag upstream or downstream of your suspension device uh, very far. So you can mend it, but then right away it's gonna catch up again and drag. But if you have them distanced apart two, three, four feet, then you can make a mend and really put that cider or that drag inducing part of your leader further away from your indicator or your dry fly. So pick an indicator that doesn't damage your tippet if you're going to fish an indicator on this rig. Now that we've talked a bit about when and where you might want to use the dry dropper rig on your Euro leader and the types of rigs and devices that I use when doing it, let's go put it to use on the water. All right, let's hop into this slow pool here. There's a shelf kind of diagonally going across the river here. So I'm just gonna work my way from below it quite a ways up to the shelf um, and then work near to far and see how that goes. Again, I've got a pretty long dropper here. It may be more than I need. I'm not gonna know until I make my first couple of drifts and see whether it's hooking bottom or, or not. Uh, the only dangerous part in here is this section of the river does have some sticks, so hopefully I don't hook any. Now, I'm just making you know a short to medium range cast to begin with. We're gonna go near to far, like I said. I am holding that rod up in the type of position you'd have for a Euro nymphing drift, but I'm allowing the tippet and 
just a little bit of the cider to be on the water. And remember, I've greased it so it's not sinking. And that allows me to then extend that drift if I want, make some mends to try and keep it going. And it looks like my dropper is not too long. I did not tick bottom and I did not catch a fish. So, all right, I make that, that cast. I am kind of stopping the rod a little bit high to get a little bit of a tuck cast to try and drive that nymph down. Now, my cider on the water here is accelerating downstream faster than the dry fly. So I'm gonna move my rod downstream of the dry fly and make that little rolling mend. Little flicks of that long rod will make that leader move a long ways. And a lot of times it's more the up and down roll that you'll get that will actually move it how you want or introduce some slack more so than a big side to side movement. Now I'm also watching the tippet around that dry fly. So what happens there is look closely, especially in, in flatter water like this where you can see it floating. If you see that tippet uh, floating for an extended amount of time, you know that that nymph has not gotten down to depth yet because you're not getting tension on that dry fly. And you'll also see that tension in the way that the dry fly is facing. So when you make your cast to begin with, a dry fly is going to be facing you when the cast lands. So if you have an indicator on the front of the dry fly like I do here, that little pink post, then you'll see the pink post directed towards you. As it starts to drift and get tension on the, the nymph, it's gonna swivel and pivot to the side and pivot upstream, hopefully, toward that nymph. That's when you know you've gotten a little bit of tension and you need to start making mends or adjusting your drift to keep that directionality so that you're getting uh, a good dead drift. My, I've made an upstream mend. My leader has now accelerated and gone downstream my dry fly. I need to make one more upstream mend to keep that, that drift going. One common mistake that a lot of people make is they think they always need to mend upstream, but actually if you have slower water between you and where your dry fly is, you may actually need to mend downstream to keep that drift going. No fish on those drifts, so I'm gonna to switch to a slightly heavier fly and see if that helps. All right, so I made those, those first few casts there with a two and a half millimeter inverting bead, a little size 20 paradigm. There's quite a few trichos around, so I thought that'd be a good choice to begin with. Uh, but I was not getting down in this pool and so I put on a three millimeter bead paired gallon. We'll see how that goes. Looks like it's probably not going to be enough either. So at this point, with as slow as this water is, that's pretty much gonna get vertical below that dry fly with that much weight. There's not really enough currents to be causing, uh, you know, horizontal angles in your, your tippet here. So I just don't have enough tippet, plain and simple, for this pool it would appear. So I'm going to make just one or two more casts and see what happens. You can see that, um, oh, there we go. That's a fish. So I just extended that drift by feeding some line down into it. And that dry fly went down once it got down below. Whatever this is, it's large. <laughs> and it's kind of not really acting like a trout. So <laughs> we'll see. Now, I've got 6X tippet on here, which is enough to land a pretty good sized fish, but <laughs> I would laugh if it's a carp because there are quite a few carp in this stretch of river, but I've never caught one on a dry dropper. <laughs> when am I gonna get that look? Yeah, I just saw a carp tail. <laughs> Not a huge surprise, but yeah, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that's funny. <sighs> and I'm 
put it back in. Here's a first for me. Oh, come on, straighten out there, buddy. <laughs> so we were just fishing dry dropper in that pool and uh, <laughs> two weight, a two weight <laughs> diamondback, 10 foot two weight and 6x tippet and a size 18 paradigon. Not what I was expecting to catch for this video. <laughs> All right, I've got a flat water pool here. It's actually still got a decent pace of current. There we go, there's a fish, whoa. And I have a little size 20 Paragon on again, this time just a 2.3 millimeter slotted bead. Whoop, okay. Thank you for wrapping the tippet fully around you. <laughs> Come on, Raveled. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> and a nice chubby little rainbow. All right, I just caught that nice medium-sized rainbow out of here. Uh, my dry fly before that was floating a little lackluster, so I've repowdered it. Uh, and again, I have a little size 20 Paragon. Oh with a 2.3 millimeter in, uh, slotted bead. And I've shortened my tippet a little bit. This pool, like I said, it's still got a decent pace. Uh, the only ripple to the surface right now is because of the wind, uh, but it's a really, really smooth pool without the wind. And I just, there's no way I could get close enough to these fish or get a good enough drift with a standard Euro rig to get what I need drift wise out of it or, or avoid spooking fish. So uh, this is kind of a classic example of a long, smooth, uncomplicated pool where it's, you're better off with that dry dropper approach. I caught that trout a few casts in, but I haven't really ticked bottom or done anything else in here. So I think I could probably benefit once again from making a little bit of a switch to a heavier fly. So first I'm going to try one step heavier, just a half step heavier, I guess, and go to a two and a half millimeter inverting bead. And then I'll go to that three mil if I need to, and then I'll add tippet if that doesn't work. Okay, so I've got, I, I made the switch. I've got a two and a half mil inverting paradigon on now, inverting bead. And uh, it's a little bit heavier than the 2.3 slot it was. And there you go, I just ticked bottom. So that's good. I'm also just tuck casting a little bit. It is harder with that dry fly to get a true tuck because that wind resistance. So really stop, you know, you can do that downer and upper variation. And that tuck cast is easier if you have a little more weight um, with the bushiness of this dry fly combined with the still fairly lightweight of that Paragon right now. It's not real easy to get a true tuck cast. Okay, that drift just kind of sailed through there. Oh, there's a fish. So that was another one of those where I extended the drift by, oh, that's a nice rainbow. I extended the drift by uh, feeding some slack into it. And I actually hooked that fish about 40, 45 degrees downstream of me. So just like when you're fishing a straight indicator rig and you feed that line, you can do the same thing with your Euro leader here, especially if you have a little thicker Euro leader with some mass you can shake. But let's get this fish over here into shallow water. And there we go. There's a fish, whoa, jumping rainbow. So I'd gone through here with uh, a couple of those tiny paradigons and we recently had some rain a couple days ago. The water's still maybe even a little more off color than usual. So I went ahead and threw a worm pattern on to see what would happen. 
And this one's a three millimeter bead, so it's gonna get down a little bit faster than those paragons, but probably not much, given that it's got a, a lot more surface area on the fly, and it's not gonna sink as quickly as the paragon. But, chubby rainbow. So, just goes to show, you can whoop, fish whatever style nymph you want on that dry dropper. We went from a paragon in flat water, which I've been told many times paragons aren't for slow water. Well, guess what? They work just fine. And then, uh, you know, I've got a warm pattern on in this slow water. Um, doesn't really matter what you fish. It's the presentation that, that counts in this case uh, and showing the, the, the fish something different after a few drifts with the paragons made that fish uh, come out of its doldrums and eat that that's uh, worm. So we, uh, we fished this flat water a little bit. Let's uh, take you upstream, show you some clear water, some big deep pools where this works well, and maybe even a little bouncing the caddis. Big bouldery canyon pool here. Great place to hit the uh, slow spots in with the dry dropper. You know, I just saw a fish swimming in the, the corner here below the surface in this dead water. I don't know where it went, but we'll put the dry dropper over there to begin with. Let's see if it's swimming in the area and comes and takes it. There it is. <laughs> oh, first brown trout of the day. Everything else we've caught has been a rainbow or a brookie. Well, of course the brown trout would be swimming over in the uh, lazy dead water. <laughs> All right, thank you, Mr. Brown Trout. So, pretty classic location for the dry dropper there. That fish is in totally dead water over here in the corner in between the rocks. And I made my cast and uh, I actually landed the, the nymph on the boulder to begin with and it wasn't moving anywhere, so I Gave it a little tension, slid the nymph off, it dropped into that space in between the rocks, and the fish took right away. So now that I've caught that fish, I'm going to cover some of the other dead current areas in the pool, like that. <laughs> uh, what have I got here? Looks like a brookie. So I've got a one of the the purple purple slash blue variations of the the diabetes on, but I did it on previously. Both fish so far are beating that. I've only got about 20 inches of tippet below my dry fly and in this big deep pool that's not going to be anywhere near the bottom but in the back end here where it's a little shallower oh just had a small fish come up and eat the caddis dry that I missed. But in this back end if I had a long dropper on I'd be ticking bottom. So I want to be able to fish that because Fish will be hanging around the tail out at least a little bit, like that last one I missed. And if I'd had a, a much longer dropper, I wouldn't have caught that first brown drop. So in this pool, having that short dropper to begin with allows you to fish the back end and any of that dead water. And then I can always add some tippet to get down a little deeper. But there's a lot of area that's good for the dry drop here. A lot of smooth, slow water. So we'll fish that with the dry dropper and then this is the type of spot I'd come back through in those center currents with the straight nymph rig. Okay, so that left side where I just made a bunch of those casts is really quite deep. And with this short dropper, I might not be deep enough. So I'm gonna reposition just a little bit get a better angle. I'll fish down the center here and then over to the little bit slower foam on my right side. Fish one or two. Now when I make that longer cast I'm letting a little bit of the leader sit on the water to begin with. There's a little fish. Woo. Sorry Rayo. <laughs> Okay, 
But if I make that longer cast and hold this slightly thicker Euronymphing leader off the water, it does want to sag or slide back towards me a little bit. So at the beginning of those longer casts, I've greased that leader and I'm just letting it sit on the water out there uh, until I can slowly retrieve enough slack to get it off the water. Okay, well I had that shorter dropper on to begin with. It was about 20 inches long. And I got a couple of fish to begin with, but I was expecting more. So I've got to think that they just weren't all willing to come up through the column. So now we're going to work a little bit deeper. I've just blood knotted on some tippet below the dry fly. So I now have about a three and a half foot dropper instead of a 20 inch dropper. It might be just three, but three, three and a half, somewhere in there. And there you go. That fish liked the little bit deeper dropper. Decent sized rainbow for this mountain stream. And took that, I switched back to an olive colored diabetes. So working shallow to deep, I already have one more fish. And this is the type of pool where there's a couple layers of shallow to deep you can go here. I'm still only working the edges. We haven't even gotten to the heavy water where I would make a standard nymphing approach yet. We're just working these slower, still deep, but slower edges. Okay, so I've worked a little bit on the left side. I'm gonna go back to the right go down that foam line again and there we go another fish that did not take a short dropper but was willing to when I switched to that longer dropper boy that's a really pretty rainbow has some nice red sides has that paradigm pan right in the pre maxillary up at the top of its mouth. See you later. Okay. So, a couple more fish now that the uh, dropper is a little bit longer. Oh, I just had another one eat that I missed. There we go. Another one on that right side on the longer dropper. Another rainbow just about the same size, maybe a little smaller than that last one. Really pretty wild rainbows here. Okay, I've just, since I just got those two in the, the slower water on the right side again, let's let them forget about me while I fish the left side one more time. From a cover perspective and a food gathering perspective, those currents that collide on the right where I just caught those last two fish, they are better currents to coalesce and gather food together, but also make the fish feel a little safer because it's in between two fast, turbulent stretches of water. So there's going to be more fish naturally in a spot like that than on the more dead side over here. That looks like it was a boulder that I ticked there. But that doesn't mean it's not worth fishing this left side. Especially up near the top. Give that a go. Give it a little tuck cast. Really reach out on that long cast to begin with and then as it comes toward me, picking up that slack. Nobody ate that. We'll give it a even a little bit longer cast over to the left side up here, right at the top. Oh, that was either bottom or a fish, and on the dry fly, <laughs> brown trout again. So, oh, never mind. That was a big rainbow, and it just broke off my dry. 
So I've re-rigged pretty much with the same rig. I've gone maybe even a little longer on the dropper because I found several more as I got deeper last time. Okay, well, I'll go back to the right here where I hooked the last couple fish before I broke that fish off. There's, oh, well, I think that was a fish, but didn't hook it. There we go. One more on the dropper. Whoa. Come here, a little rainbow. Okay. All right, so now I've made quite a few drifts. I've re-rigged. I've gone shallow to deep with the dry dropper itself. There's a couple more options now to finish off the pool. If I were gonna show this all in the whole sequence, I would first maybe get sideways to this part and try more of that bouncing caddis drift. And then after that, I would nymph the whole center through all this heavy current here. So I've gone through the water that I can dry dropper with. Now's the time to switch to that full nymph rig and cover the rest of it at the deepest point. All right, one more still on that dry dropper in that area. Back on the Paragon, down deep. So that's, I think, four or five landed out of that one little area over there. And there's probably more that I could nymph up. But as far as the dry dropper fishing goes, I've done most of it that I can do in this pool. And now would be the time to switch to that nymph rig and go even deeper still. So as you can see, dry dropper fishing on the Euro leader, it definitely gives you some options to, to work different water in a pool like this or, or flats that you might not with your straight Euro nymphing rig. Uh, and it also just offers different presentations that you can't get with the Euro nymphing rig alone. So hopefully it gives you some ideas of how to use it on your own water at home. Go out there, put that dry and a dropper on your Euro rig. Hopefully you'll get a few fish to come up to your dry, but if not, I know you'll get some to eat your nymph. Thanks everyone for watching this Tactical Fly Fisher video. We really appreciate your support of the channel and our store over at tacticalflyfisher.com. So come on over there if you need any fly tying or fly fishing equipment. While you're at it, please subscribe to the channel, hit that little bell notification so that you get a notification on your phone when we post a new video. And lastly, go ahead and drop us a comment. What do you want to see next? What do you like that we're doing? What do you want to see covered on the water? Uh, we'll do our best to, to get to as many as we can. So thanks again for watching.